garter stitch prevents the fabric from rolling and it has greater thickness than stockinette and some distinctive little ridges. On the knitting machine we have to do this by turning the fabric every row after knitting it, but we can achieve a similar effect with what I call mock garter stitch and this video is about that. Mock garter stitch reduces roll but does not completely remove it. We do have to trim with an additional roll stopper. We usually use the purl side of this fabric as the right side. Here it is on a baby sweater. This is actually one of the basic patterns from the Answer Ladies machine knitting notebook and I just used this trim as an accent and it looks completely different. The ridges created by this technique reduce the slipperiness of knitting against the floor. So it's really useful in these non-slippers from the Great Knitted Gifts Volumes 1 and 2 book. Here I'm using it for a Swiffer cover that's in progress because those ridges have a nice scrubby effect against a dirty floor. The stitch also resembles back loop only crochet. And here's where I used it to emulate a back loop only crochet design. This one is in the Great Knitted Gifts Volumes 1 and 2 book also. The scrubby in the upper right is truly crocheted. The others are the pattern and you can see how similar it is. And of course those ridges help the scrubbing activity. So it's a very versatile technique. Let's get on with showing you how to do it. Here I've already cast on with the contrast color and now with the main color I'll knit two rows. The yarn tail for the contrast color is still hanging down at the right with the latch tool still in it. Let's prepare to make our first row of mock garter stitch. Now we'll pick up the red yarn or the, whatever we're using from where it's dangling down on the right side and pull all the needles forward and chain stitch all the way across. Make the stitches neat, but be careful not to make them so tight that the carriage will have trouble knitting them back. All the way across like this. We're now on the left side. Do make that last stitch all the way around the needle. I know sometimes we just hang it on the needle, but we need it to go around so we can leave the latch needle or latch tool hanging down along with the yarn tail. Make sure the carriage is set to knit back from hold and knit across. On this particular carriage, knitting back from hold involves this being forward. On brothers, it would be N as opposed to H. Now at this point, we could actually work another row of chain stitch. We want to work an odd number of rows, so the choices are one, three, five, and so on. And I have chosen three for this project. And this is why. We want to pick up and resume chaining with the same yarn. So bring the needles forward again. Now I chain right to left with my hand above and left to right with my chaining hand below. That does make the rows of chain stitches slightly different. It's not a difference that's enough to bother me. So all the way across like this. If it does bother you, make sure to orient your hand in the same position for both directions. So here's our tool and our red yarn tail hanging down. The main yarn is still threaded into the carriage. That's the blue. two, three. And now we're set so that we can again work from right to left. Fishing around and finding my loop because I dropped it. Put it back on the tool and chain across. And we just keep on doing this for as long as we want. It might be for the whole project, like in the scrubby. It might be for the whole project, but less frequently as for the slippers, or it may be only for the hem, 
as it is for the little sweater. The way we've been doing it with the pearl side as the right side is definitely the easier way, but it is possible to make the knit side the right side and have our ridges come out on it. I like to pull all the needles forward and then pull the knitting out towards the latches, but this way the latches are preventing it from sliding off. You have to work more to get your tool and your trimming yarn out of the way of the main yarn working from this side. But other than that, the operation is just the same. This is my fourth row across. Again, I'm chaining with my hand above the needles, going one direction and below on the other direction. So alternate rows will have different appearances. And now I'll just knit three rows as I have been. Three rows are knitted. Bring everything forward. And work across the other way. And here's how that comes out looking on the finished fabric. If I wanted a more even and consistent look, I could chain always with my hand on the same side of the work. Up to now, when I'm working from right to left, I've been feeding the yarn from the bottom and working with my hand on top, which is easier for me. But you can do it the other way. And here I am working with the yarn feeding from the top and my hand on the bottom just as I have been doing from left to right. And we should get even rows that look the same as each other. I'm not as skillful at it, but I'll get better, and so will you, because practice is everything. And here is the look that you get if you follow this procedure. That is, always feeding the yarn from the same up or down side of the knitting needles and your hand on the other. This is the book I told you about that houses the slipper and the scrubby pattern. It was originally two separate volumes sold individually. It's been merged into one supersized volume and is available at TheAnswerLady.com.